Greetings, everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the most common way of calculating uh, the amount of drug or the amount of volume of a drug we're going to give to a patient. So in order for us to begin this discussion, we have to have an understanding of the most commonly employed formula. And that formula for drug calculations almost always is going to be this. It's going to be the desired dose over the on-hand dose times the volume that the on-hand dose comes in. All right, so let's take a look at those. So the desired dose, the D for desired dose, this is going to be how much we want to give. So how much the protocol says, uh, how much the doctor says. Uh, in any case, it's going to be how much we want to give the patient. And this is usually going to be in number of milligrams that we're going to want to give. All right, the H, this is the D part. The H sta stands for on hand or how much you have. All right, so this will be, um, this will be the, uh, the amount or the, um, the amount of the drug that you have on hand, amount of drug on hand. Whoops, that's supposed to be a U on hand. All right, so um, this is also almost always in number of milligrams. So the unit here will be milligrams, and uh, of course the number will be 5, 10, whatever it is that you have. And then the V is volume, and this is the volume that you come with. So if you have a, um, this is the volume of the prepackaged uh, drug, volume of drug in package. So it could be one milliliter, it could be 10 milliliters, it could be hundreds of milliliters, it could be in liters. In any case, this is usually a volumetric. This is always a volume. So usually it's going to be number of milliliters. All right? So the desired, uh, the desired drug, the amount that we want to give the patient, divided by the amount of drug that we have on hand. Again, these are both milligrams. And then we're going to multiply that by the volume that this on-hand drug comes in. All right, so let's take a look at what this looks like. Again, I apologize for the banners there. All right, so let's just take a quick common example. We're going to have to give Benadryl, and you have to give 25 milligrams of Benadryl. All right, we're going to administer this medication. So the next piece that you need to know is that Benadryl comes in a 50 milligram vial, and the volume of that vial is one milliliter. All right, so if you're having difficulty, if you know that math is a weakness for you, then always remember that you can write out your formula, D over H times V, all right, and I would encourage you to do so, and then simply assign the values to those things. So your desired dose is 25 milligrams. Always, always, always carry your units. You will make less mistakes if you carry the units because at the end, if you've carried the wrong units, you're going to realize that you ended up with something that you shouldn't have ended up with, and you'll be able to backtrack and, and make it right. It's always better to make a mistake on paper than it is to do a drug maladministration and risk the patient uh, safety aspect of things just because you didn't feel like you know, this was cool enough for you to, uh, to write things down. All right, your on-hand dose, right? This is this guy here, so this is 50 milligrams. All right, and then, of course, the volume is one milliliter. All right, so let's take a look at what it looks like now. So if you were going to write this out, you would say that the desired dose is 25 milligrams divided by what your on-hand dose is, which is 50 milligrams. And I'm going to include the one milliliter here only so that I include all of the components. But just understand, anytime you're multiplying by one, you can simply omit that piece there. Um, the issue is that if you omit that piece, then you don't know what unit you're ending up with. So again, I would encourage you, um, even when you're good at this, even if you're fast at this, to always include all of your units. All right, so we can eliminate milligrams here because these will cancel these other th these uh, they'll cancel each other out. And now we're left with 25 divided by 50. All right, so here we could do 0 0.5 milligrams times 1 ml, all right, and actually I apologize, this is not milligrams here because we in essence got rid of our milligrams. Let's take a look back here. This is where we got rid of our milligrams here. So it's 0 0.5 times 1 ml is equal to 0 0.5 milliliters. And this is of Benadryl. So if we had to say 
How much volume do we need to administer to administer 25 milligrams of Benadryl? Well, if Benadryl comes in a 50 milligram per 1 ml vial, which it does, then the answer is we'd give 0.5 milliliters of Benadryl. And in case you've forgotten this from your either middle school or high school days, it is always the practice to put a, uh, a leading zero. It is never acceptable to put a trailing zero. So this is what I mean. So here's a little pearl for math. Here's a little pearl for um, a little tidbit to avoid errors in, uh, it with drugs. Um, anytime you have a decimal point followed by a number, you should always put a leading zero. Leading zero is really, really important. Do it, all right? Do it. Don't forget to put the leading zero. Because otherwise, if you do this, and whoever's reading this doesn't see your point, your decimal point here, we can kill people with decimal points that we've missed, literally. If you give five milligrams of morphine to an infant, instead of giving 0 0.5 milligrams, you will invariably end up having to intubate or at least bag this patient and give them Narcan, then they'll throw up. It's a, it's a mess, all right? And that's not even a really, really bad drug because we can reverse it. The idea here is that if you put a zero, there would never be a zero than a five written without a decimal point in between. So if they see zero five, hopefully that'll make them think about a decimal point here. And then trailing zeros, we would never do. So for example, you'd never write a trailing zero ever Trailing zeros are big no-nos, all right? Ever, we never put a trailing zero here, again, because the possibility exists that this is misconstrued for a 50 instead of a five. So this you always do. This is a big yes, always, always, always. This is a never do, all right? This is never. So leading zeros, absolutely. Trailing zeros, never. All right, let's do another problem here so that you can, uh, you can refer back to it if you need to. Um, in this case, this will be another patient that we need to administer atropine to, and that patient needs to receive 0 0.5 milligrams of atropine. And atropine, as, you'll, as you already know or you'll soon find out, comes in a 1 milligram per 10 ml pre-filled syringe. All right, so same concept here. Remember, desired over on hand times the volume in which it comes. Let's assign our numbers here. The desired dose is 0 0.5 milligrams. All right, remember to always carry your units. Your on hand is 1 milligram. Your volume that it comes in is 10 milliliters. All right, so let's set ourselves up. Uh, desired here. Whoops, let's go back. Sorry about that. And let's do this. So our desired is 0 0.5 milligrams. Our on hand dose is one milligram. And that's gonna be multiplied by 10 milliliters. Now, in, or, in terms of order of operations, it doesn't matter if you divide first or if you multiply first. It absolutely makes no difference. So I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna choose to multiply. You do it however you wanna do it, doesn't matter. In any case, the milligrams are gonna cancel each other out. So 0 0.5 times 10 is equal to five over one. This is my one here. And the unit that's left over is milliliters. All right, so five over one mLs is exactly the same thing as saying five milliliters. So if we had to administer 0.5 milligrams of atropine, and if that atropine comes one milligram per 10 ml, this D over H times V formula and the math tells us we would administer five milliliters, that's the volume, in order to get 0.5 milligrams on board for the patient. All right, as always, if you have any questions, bring them to class. We'll do tons of drug calculations so that you can get good practice and that you can become very proficient at this. This is kind of an important deal.